Hi, Clara Applewhite Designs. Here I'm going to be showing you the tools of my trade. So we begin with the drawing stage and I draw on bright white paper that I get at the office supply store. This is what it looks like out of the plastic and it's the best size for me width wise because my scarves are 14 by 70 so I just roll it out measure it off. Of course you need your ruler long preferably with cork backing so it doesn't slip when you're working with it. Your set square masking tape scotch tape your scissors when i draw the design i usually make sure that once i've drawn it in pencil i go over it with a black sharpie pen because i want to be able to see the design through the silk once i've drawn that on the bright white i tape very carefully tape the edges of the design so that it does not rip. Some of the des these designs I will do one or two colorways or just more colors in it so I need to use it again. When that is done we tape it. I tape it to the bottom of the screen. This is my screen six feet by 15 or 18 across. this way and on the other side on this side I tape I tack the silk scarf hence the reason for the black sharpie I can see this design straight through the silk so once that is done we are working with the guta it's a water-based guta this is what I use and it is jacquard and it's proportion. You mix it with water one to one for the best consistency. If you want it thicker, you use less water, but this is what you use and you shake it, stir it thoroughly. I pour it out into my squeeze bottle, which has the nib and the stylus goes over it like so. While you're drawing and you have to put this bottle down, always make sure to put a stainless steel straight pin into the top of the stylus so it is not clogged on you. And there are other kinds of resist. We have the metallic resists, gold and copper as well as black. I have used the black when I'm doing stained glass windows to stained glass window designs so you imitate the lead with the black. The other tool, the silk salt. This is used but here's some clean silk salt here that is used for your textures. And here are your paints. The Dynaflow, as it used to be sold like this, now it is sold in this bottle. I have kept all these bottles because it's easier to work with. The mouth is wider. And I hold it like this and work like that. Always, when you're using Dynaflow, shake the bottles thoroughly because there is separation and sedimentation. You will then, of course, most important, are the Sumi brushes. They're bamboo brushes and they hold, they're perfect for this particular technique because they hold a lot of dye or paint. So these are the brushes I use to paint with. These are two new ones. 
for small detailed areas I use the synthetic brushes which do not hold a lot of dye so you really want to work in small areas I would not use this for this big an area I would use a sumi brush if you want to do grounds you have the wide flat brushes once that is finished I then sign the piece that I'm doing with the identity pen I prefer the identity pens they don't bleed too much and they come in various colors as you can see and one important thing you've got all the colors that you're using and you make yourself a color chart so this color chart sits where I can see it all the, at all times so when I'm planning my design I start planning where the colors which colors I'm using which colors are too close etc because I am a textile designer so the color layout is important sometimes the color I know what the colors are gonna be and sometimes I don't so I refer to my color chart so you always have some other added pieces your spritz bottle water and your paper towels so there you have it please like subscribe and check out my Instagram at Clara Designs Art. Enjoy.